We are on a journey to watch the entire Star Trek franchise from the very beginning and for the very first time. We've watched all of Star Trek, the original series, the animated series, Star Trek, the motion picture, The Wrath of Khan, and now today, The Search for Spock. Yeah, this is another one where we're going in completely blind. I have no idea. I mean, I can guess the premise by the title. Yeah, I have zero clue about anything about this movie. Haven't even heard stuff like I heard some loose stuff about motion picture or Wrath of Khan beforehand. Have heard literally nothing. All I know is the title. <laughs> if you guys want to see our full reaction to this and watch along with us, sync it up with your own copy of The Search for Spock, you can get that on our Patreon. The link for that's in the description. But we're going to get started with The Search for Spock right now. Uh, what if this is the aspect ratio for the whole movie? <laughs> This is also something I've noticed too, with like movies from like the 80s, they did this a lot more if it was a sequel where they would recap, you know, show what happened. Like I think the Rocky movies did that too. I don't know if they just didn't trust like the audience to see it as much as they do today. Maybe we really are gonna be going back here, huh? Where no man has gone before. Hand through the kiss. <laughs> like this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it. I, I can guarantee this won't happen, but it'd be funny if, like, search for Spock, they go to that one planet and they find giant Spock, but not regular Spock. <laughs> oh, yeah. They have to go there. That's not the right one. I mean, technically, it is Spock. All right, they're going to give away that he's in the movie with his name in the credits here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> pop, gotta pop for a hurrah. <laughs> yep. What? Spock's dad? Same guy coming back too? Oh, that's awesome. Lieutenant Savick. So this is the person taking over Savick from Kirstie Alley. Oh, Christopher Lloyd? Oh, wow. Oh, shit. One of the descriptions. Mm -hmm. What? What? <laughs> what? I didn't know that. Okay, now I'm psyched. I... So his name was in the credits, but not for acting. We're almost home. Yet I feel uneasy. Oh, is this picking right up? Oh, wow, cool. How much refit time till we can take her out again? Eight weeks, sir. But you don't have eight weeks, so I'll do it for you in two. <laughs> <laughs> have you always multiplied your repair estimates by a factor of four? Certainly, sir. How else can I keep my reputation as a miracle worker? <laughs> <laughs> he is a miracle worker. I really like how affected they're making them here. Oh, the trauma's still there. So I think it's been a little bit of time, right, if Savick and uh, his son have been reassigned. Well, he said they went to the planet, so maybe they went right from the ship down okay, to the planet yeah. and just stayed there. What the hell is this? Commander Krug. Okay. This is Valkris. Is Christopher Lloyd the villain? Whoa! Oh, oh shit! He's a click on! <laughs> no way! Oh, look at that thing! Look at that thing! Stop. You're telling me someone saw this one? Yeah, that's Doc Brown right there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, they're gonna blow the ship up. Yep. Great setup. Yeah. Willing to kill his own, what seemed like, you know, Wife or lover. Duty and honor first and tradition, whatever it is. Get that! Look! Chuck with! Okay. <laughs> Even they're afraid of it. Do you think they got that cloaking device from the, the Romulans? Oh, yeah. From that one episode? The Enterprise incident. That was the Enterprise. Oh, okay. That's with the female Romulan captain? That's right, that's right. Space Doc, you have control. Affirmative Enterprise, enjoy the ride and welcome home. Enterprise confirms. They don't even have to land their own ships. Come to think of it, besides Space Doc, we never see the Enterprise land anywhere. It's always in space. Ooh, another Enterprise. Big sensor. Mm. Ready for trial runs. She's 
supposed to have transport drive. And if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Damn young engineers, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Makes sense, Scotty has great pride in the, the Enterprise. Oh, they brought Janus back again. So I wonder, does the, do the Starfleet know yet about Spock? That's what I'm curious about. An energy reading from Sea Deck, from inside Mr. Spock's quarters. I ordered Spock's quarters sealed. Did they get rid of those security cameras that are everywhere? <laughs> Jim, help me. Help me. Whoa, what the? Take me home. Bones, we are. We are home. Remember. Oh. Uhura, get the medics down here. Get them now. Well, great first scene for Force Kelly. Mm -hmm. Starfleet's highest commendation. And more importantly, extended shore leave. Woo, surely. <laughs> <laughs> they need your wisdom on the new Excelsior. Report there tomorrow as captain of engineering. I prefer to supervise the refit of Enterprise. Jim, the Enterprise is 20 years old. We feel her day is over. Fair enough. Makes sense, yeah. You are all under orders not to discuss with anyone your knowledge of Genesis. Do not bring it up in a YouTube video. You will be demonetized. <laughs> so used to things not being connected it's weird that like the weapon or the device from the previous movie is like a, a plot point for the villains in this one to, yeah exactly it's weird federation science vessel grissom arriving genesis planet dr marcus it's your planet boo <laughs> this is where the fun begins Savick. just like your father you look a bit different recently <laughs> Did they recast Savage? Yeah, they recast it, yeah. Captain, the logical alternative is obvious. Beaming down to the surface is permitted. If the captain decides. That actress who's playing Savage now definitely looks and acts more Vulcan. I'll give her that. Yeah. She has to be decommissioned. Will we get another I like this. I can't get an answer. That's great. Ah, oh, Mr. Scott. Come. <laughs> it's the fucking goat! <laughs> I will speak with you alone, Kirk. Remember, he didn't even want Spock in Starfleet. That's true. Why did you leave him on Genesis? Spock trusted you, and you denied him his future. You must know that you should have come with him to Vulcan. But why? Because he asked you to. Believe me when I tell you. He made no request of me. He would not have spoken of it openly. I was going to say, did we miss something? I, I was like thinking through my thoughts. I'm like, in the show, did he say something? May I join your mind? Because they were running out of time. Maybe it was a quick, like, okay, I can't tell you because you're not going to get it. So I just I have to put it in your mind really quick so I can save the ship. Forgive me. It is not here. Oh, he was wrong. Yeah, so he planted it in the okay. very quick. Okay. I was right. Ship, out of danger. Yes. Back point seven seven. They're bringing in the everything's recorded. Remember. You must bring them to Mount Silea on Vulcan. Only there can both find peace. Now I'm just imagining, like, Spock's like Vulcan essence or whatever. Like he's just on this planet. Wait, what the hell? Did they leave me here? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Gonna be empty. Come on. Oh. Savick. So is he naked out there? The council has ordered that no one but the science team goes to Genesis. What council? Keep up this emotional behavior and you'll lose everything. You'll destroy yourself. 
Do you understand me, Jim? <laughs> Sorry, I was listening. <laughs> I had to drive. Of course. Just go straight to space dock. Just gets in the Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> just by himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is that? Really stepping it up with the foreign species this time. I like it. Oh, the trolls! I here am new, but you are known, being McCoy from Enterprise. And we got a Yoda. Message received. Available ship stands by. Do you know Ben? Price you name. Money I got. <laughs> <laughs> name of the place we're going is Genesis. Genesis? Sir, I'm sorry, but your voice is scary. I don't think you want to be discussing this subject in public. I'll discuss what I like. And who in the hell are you? <laughs> Federation security, sir. <laughs> gonna get a nice long rest, doctor. Oh, I love it. Where's Admiral Kirk? He's with the prisoner. Get him quickly. Commander Starfleet wants him right away. Oh. Oh. Keeping you busy? <laughs> Don't get smart, Tiny. Starfleet's man sick. Here, take a look. <laughs> 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 we haven't seen Kirk punch anyone in any of the movies yeah. yet. Agents on their way up. <laughs> oh, there oh, you go. Yeah. Damn. Don't call me tiny. <laughs> Peace and quiet appeals to me, Lieutenant. Yeah, well, maybe that's okay for someone like you, whose career is winding down. Ah. I need some challenge in my life, some adventure. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. You're gonna sit in the closet. What, have you lost all your sense of reality? This isn't reality. This is fantasy. <laughs> and I'll see all of you at the rendezvous. All my hopes. Can they even bring a change of clothes? Or are they all just gonna wear civilian clothes the whole time? That'd be interesting. I like it. Excelsior powering up with orders to pursue. Status? Look at that fancy bridge. Full yeah. impulse power. So weird to think, you know, it's the whole Enterprise and it's just them five on there. Yeah, not, no other uh, 400 members or whatever. Yeah. Prepare for warp speed, stand by, transwarp drive. Ha 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 Aye, sir. The more they overthink the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. Oh, he sabotaged them. I took them out of her main transwarp computer drive. Nice of you to tell me in advance. That's what you get for missing staff meetings, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to recommend you all for promotion in whatever fleet we end up serving. <laughs> Best speed to Genesis. Oh, the involvement of the crew in this movie is so much better. Wait. Is that Kid Spock? Did the Genesis turn him back into a baby and that's why the robes were off? Uh, Savick, that's, uh, that's extraordinary. Request permission to beam aboard immediately. Why am I getting the feeling this guy's like, blow him up. Yeah, he's like, uh, leave him behind. Well, nuke the planet. Sir, something is jamming our transmission. An energy surge. Locate. Um, you know what that is. It's Christopher Lloyd. Oh, yep. Stand by for evasive. Bah. Oh, you're done. Come on, pull! Jump in there! But stop! Gah! Didn't they say in the last movie that they don't take prisoners? <laughs> I appreciate the confidence to put these guys just in, like, full daylight setting. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. Where, like, the makeup and costuming can be vulnerable. Like, that... Mm -hmm. It'd be understanding if they were like, I'll oh, keep him on this shrouded dark, you know, ship. But no, they're like right out in the 
daylight. It's like, we don't care. We're confident. I used proto matter in the Genesis Matrix. An unstable substance which every ethical scientist in the galaxy has denounced as dangerously unpredictable. Thank you for the <laughs> exposition. How many have paid the price for your impatience? How many have died? You think they're trying to set up like a Spock Kirk dynamic between those two, like they're the next Spock Kirk? Uh, David and Savick? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! He just dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, and was that supposed to be like the thing we saw earlier as the little animal yeah, and yeah. how it's already evolved? Yeah. It's great. That was a nice little character moment, you know. Starfleet members would like study and from afar, but he just like, <laughs> no idea what it is, just grabs it and kills it. Like. Yeah. Probably super irregular uh, sunups and sundowns on this planet, maybe. Yeah, I was wondering that. I'm like, they created this planet, but did that create a whole solar system? Like, what is their sun, their moon? Yeah, I know that there was a theory that our moon was like a piece of an asteroid. I don't know if that was ended up being proven not true. I don't know, but or wasn't it a piece of Earth? Like, a, like or an a piece of Earth an asteroid that, hit Earth and, and then, broke off. Yeah, but that's never made sense to me because like, what did we do before that? Not humans, but like the planet Earth. Like, doesn't the moon control a lot of shit? I don't know. Well, when God made Adam and Eve. <laughs> we all went through this growing up. So that Spock's probably like a blank slate. Like, a, If he doesn't have his memories, he's aged yeah. so fast, he's probably an idiot. Stand by to transfer energy to weapons. There. Oh, doesn't matter. Even if you're invisible, Kirk will point you out. A cloaking device. Red alert, Mr. Scott. There you come. Red alert for who? It's just you guys. <laughs> Fire, Mr. Scott. Ooh, nice. Ah. Oh, no. Now he's really going to be pissed. Oh! What? Knocked out the automation center. I've got no control over anything. We're a sitting duck. <laughs> the enemy commander wishes a truce to confer. Put him on screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of that? <laughs> and you called him. Why did you turn around like that? Do not lecture me about treaty violations. Lighting is fantastic. I have three prisoners. If you do not surrender immediately, I will execute them one at a time as enemies of galactic peace. Oh boy. And now to show that my intentions are sincere, I shall kill one of the prisoners. Wait a minute. Give me a chance to talk. Uh -huh. Who's it gonna be? Some classic Star Trek. Oh! David. Admiral. David is dead. Bring on passage. You've killed my son. There are two more prisoners, Admiral. You want them killed too? Give me a minute to inform my crew. I give two minutes for you and your gallant crew. But he can't be dead because they're on Genesis and he would just regenerate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, so. Prepare to board this ship on my next signal. No tricks, Kirk. But I'm going to celebrate while he's, uh, while he's gone. <laughs> Computer, destruct sequence one. Code one. One A. Commander Montgomery Scott, destruct sequence two. Code one. One A. They're going to blow it up? But throwback to needing Scott and... This is Commander Pavel Chekhov. Ooh, they added the third one, huh? No, I do think it was those three. Was it three? I thought it, yeah. was, I thought it was just two. Code. Zero. 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 Yep. Destruct. Remember, once it gets to five. Kirk! Oh my god. The time runs out. All set. 
Oh, so he's going to have them board and then blow them up? <laughs> All right. But the bridge yeah, seems to be so. run by computer. Let me hear. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> So is the Enterprise just going to blow up? Oh my god. No. Oh, oh shit! Oh, what a shot. All the memories. What have I done? What you had to do. Turn death into a fighting chance to live. Well, you're still gonna have Christopher Lloyd coming after you. Oh yeah, and these guys. And these guys too, yeah. So are we killing another one? Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh! Well, he's got his full grown man strength. Oh shit! I'm guessing no one else on the planet is affected because their cells didn't... Because it didn't form there? Yeah. Sorry, David. Drop all uh, weapons! Who's driving your ship? Autopilot. You should take the Vulcan too. No! But why? Because you wish it! <laughs> if we don't help each other, we'll die here! Perfect! Then that's the way it shall be! Come on, fight scene, come on! Got that boost. He didn't even mean to jump on him. <laughs> he just fell. I wasn't trying to fight you. I'm sorry. <laughs> How strong are Klingons? Have they ever established that in the lore? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> we did it first! <laughs> we had not seen this movie. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> oh shit! It's about to break, isn't it? No! Oh! oh, shit! Oh, wow. I can't believe he did that flip. That's just clean as hell, too. Oh, is he trying to trick him by speaking Klingon? Help us or die. I do not deserve to live. Fine, I'll kill you later. <laughs> <laughs> My god, there's operating a Klingon yeah. vessel. Mr. Checo, take the prisoner below. Aye, sir. Wait! You said you would kill me. I lied. And that's how the Klingons got into the Federation. Oh, here oh, we go. Yeah. Forgot Mount Salia. Oh, hell yeah. That's the same gong they had in Muktain, the one that they broke. <laughs> I ask for foul torpan. Your request is not logical. My logic is uncertain where my son is concerned. Damn. But McCoy, you must now be warned. The danger to thyself is as grave as the danger to Spock. You must make the choice. I choose the danger. Hell of a time to ask. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> like, what's he gonna say? No. <laughs> no, let's go. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy just directing the scene from laying down. All right, everyone. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I know, man. It's crazy when people do that. I thank you. I had to do. And at what cost? I haven't tried. The cost would have been my soul. And also, to be fair, his son probably would have died anyway. I mean, the Klingons were already there. I'm sure that doesn't make him feel any better, but... Dead silent. No music. My father says that you have been my friend. You came back for me. Because the needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many. 
Your name is Jim. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was going to be like, I'm not back fully. I don't know who you people are. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ah. Oh my God. <laughs> when they go back to Starfleet, do you think they all get arrested? Oh, I don't even know, man. I didn't even thought about that. I mean, do they have the power to arrest them? Well, yeah, they stole the Enterprise and then it's blown up. It's for the voyage home? Yeah. Okay, so they go home. Maybe they run into another. The whole movie thing is them getting home so that, I <laughs> so like, that you forget about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I totally didn't expect it to pick right up from uh, Wrath of Khan. I mean, we should have expected some continuity, but with Search for Spock and uh, the whole Remember thing. I liked how the first two movies te teased the Klingons and then they finally were like a villain. But I thought Christopher Lloyd did a pretty good job as a villain. He was unique and interesting. Yeah, in terms of the continuity, you, I think you said it best when you uh, you know, said it was so weird because the show had rare callbacks, but it, it's all been separate. Everything's like each episode, each thing, animated series, same way. Then even the first two movies felt very separate. So this is the first time we're seeing like a direct continuation in Star Trek. And I know that eventually we'll get to shows and, you know, maybe movies too, I don't know, but uh, I don't know what the next gen movies are like, but I know we'll eventually get to shows where there is more of a continuity, but uh, to see that was wild. Can I just say, um, I love this movie. This is like a perfect movie. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I like this one the best of the three so far. Really? This wow. had, I'm gonna have to think about it. Obviously we'll, we'll do the discussion, but like this had essentially everything I've ever asked for from Star Trek, whether it be the show or the movies, like it had uh, literally everything. And it, it was just all done so well. There was nothing in here that I was like, oh man, they should have done this instead, or this should have been done better. Like it, it was all, just perfect. I mean, uh, of course, there's small nitpicks we can get into, um, but overall, I mean, my God, the story, amazing. The writing was done by this guy, Harv Bennett, who I guess started writing, uh, he wrote The Wrath of Khan, and then he wrote this, and he wrote the future movies as well, which that's good news, um, but writing was excellent. Um, the directing from Leonard Nimoy, of all people, was amazing, and I also love that, like, Spock wasn't really in it, like, until the very end. I love that, you know, how restrained they were of not just totally erasing. I was afraid that it was going to completely erase his death in the sense of, like, oh, he's back in the first act and it doesn't matter. Like, no, the entire movie is getting him back right up until the end of him starting to realize who he is. Just amazing. That would have been, yeah, that would have been really bad if he showed up in the first <laughs> act, considering the movie's called Star Trek. <laughs> so I'm glad they had that restraint to uh, not have him till the end. And even then, when we do get him back, like he's not him. And even though when he does get his memory back, like they still don't give it to us until like the very, very end, where he's like, you, and he's not even fully back yet. All he said was, "Your name is Jim." Yeah, I agree with you. This movie was great. The direction from Leonard Nimoy was fantastic. Uh, acting, uh, the lighting, all the, the sets. It just felt like a very good extended episode of Star Trek. Yeah. And I also find it weird that this is like a sequel to the sequel. Like, But it, it didn't start with like the, the first movie feels like its own thing. Mm -hmm. This is only a sequel to Wrath of Khan, which I, which I find weird. And I'm guessing the next one's a sequel only in this like Wrath of Khan, uh, Search for Spock, Voyage Home. Like the first one almost feels like its own episode of Star Trek. Well, this I'm guessing this is going to be a three movie arc, which I find fascinating. Yeah, it's like the first one was like a pilot for movies, and they're like, okay, yeah. it worked, let's make an actual thing, like an actual series of films. Yeah, and like, that final fight scene was everything I could have asked for. I missed that, especially after the first two movies where we didn't see anything from Kirk, and then seeing him back in his roots, the, <laughs> the kickflip, the dive off the rocks. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd was great as the villain. I mean, I love that he was more just a consequence, like this external factor. He wasn't set up as, like, a con, for example. He wasn't the center of the film. Like, Kirk had, they had their own goal. You know, the first half of the movie, basically, is them getting to go on, getting the Enterprise going on their journey to Genesis to get Spock back. They don't even know this Klingon ship with Christopher Lloyd is lurking out there. And then that's just something they have to deal with, the mm -hmm. consequences of. And it was great, like, adding that to the movie, it, like, took it to another level. But in theory, like, the movie could have 
still existed. The plot of the movie could have still existed without them. And I love stuff like that where it's like the plot doesn't need to always, there doesn't always need to be this like, uh, what's the word, like inciting incident. Like sometimes you can just have a plot that naturally develops and things just happen. You know, and it's like, you could argue that the inciting incident was the ending of the last movie. Like, that's it was Spock's death. That's fair. Mm -hmm. But the movie didn't have any, like, plot contrivances or anything. I was like, oh, well, we're only doing this so that the movie moves forward. It was like, everything just went so smoothly. Uh, and I got to talk about Mark Leonard coming back as uh, Sarek, Spock's father. I mean, one of my favorite characters from TOS, he, he was only in one episode, obviously one of our favorite episodes in Journey to Babel, and then I was shocked by the fact that they brought him back for an episode of the animated series, but it's like, yeah, I mean, he just comes back in voices, probably took him one day of work. <laughs> so then to bring him back years later, like years upon years later, for a movie in the same role, and he looks phenomenal, he acted phenomenal, like, wow, I mean, that's excellent. Yeah, and his arcs, you know, he was like, his, he was so against Spock and Starfleet, and he was like, like, he thinks Spock is logic driven. Sarek was even more, and he's like, you know, he goes against logic in the end to bring his son back when it always seemed like he was putting everything else for Spock. So, yeah, and think about how disappointing it would have been if they recast him. Like that would have been that would have sucked. I mean, recasting uh, Savick, whatever. I don't like recasts. We've been over this, but it's a part of Hollywood. You know, it is what it is. Robin Curtis, I thought did a better job than Kirstie Alley. I think Kirstie Alley gave a good performance, but I never felt like she was a Vulcan really. Hmm. Robin Curtis, I thought felt like a female Spock. Like <laughs> uh, hit the notes for me. So if that's what they told her, like here, be Spock. She did a good she job. She even dropped some Spock lines, like fascinating and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Illogical, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like she felt like a Vulcan for sure. Yeah. Um. So loved all that. David, yeah, he's there. Didn't do much. They killed him. Almost like they were like, yeah, let's get rid of this. <laughs> How about Janice too? She was literally in one shot. Yeah. Not like she had any lines. She was just in one scene. Yeah, just brought her on set for a day. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad she was there. And uh, I think my favorite is just like the Enterprise crew just stealing the Enterprise in their street clothes. Just get him out of those red jumpsuits or those red Navy uniforms. Yeah, don't like it. I just I, I want some modernized yellow, blue, red. Ahura, great stuff. A little bit weird that she just had to be the one to stay behind, whatever. Maybe they just didn't want it to be too crowded. At least they gave her something. That, that's yeah. another one of my big things is that everyone felt like they had a good part to play it didn't feel like it was just uh, the big three and the other people were just sitting in their chairs that's it mm -hmm. like they're like they all got involved in the heist they all went down there there's some good scenes with everybody where it, you can tell the actors probably complained about the first two like give us something to do and yeah. i'm sure Nichelle nichols was just fine with that scene because she got to do something besides sitting in her chair yeah and the scene fit her character so well all the stuff at the beginning like again just everything i've always asked for like we got to finally see like more of Starfleet. Not that it was a huge part or anything, but like in that first act, seeing just all these Starfleet members just sitting around drinking, Bones going to that one random bar, you know, um, all the different characters that we met, even though it was just a small part in the beginning, like it really built out and made you feel again like Starfleet is this real thing. You know, it's not just like, let's show up for one episode, a couple episodes a season and go away and we don't matter. Like they're actually this real force with maybe consequences for Kirk and stuff and you know what he's going to do the whole line where he's like if you do this you'll never sit in the captain's chair again you know yeah uh, my question is what ship are they going to get next are they just going to hang out in this Klingon bird or are they is Vulcan going to give them a ship like that's my plan like maybe it's called the voyage home because they don't really have a ship besides that I don't know living on Vulcan wouldn't be the worst honestly yeah it seems like a pretty cool place the voyage home is also another one where I know nothing about so that'll be nope. exciting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, blown up the Enterprise. Didn't see that coming. Um, once they started, I did remember vaguely people commenting when we watched that episode of like that sequence would come back at some point, but I had no idea, you know, that totally left my mind. So when that came back, I was like, oh shit. Um, and then it actually happened, you know. Um, good for them to like have the balls to do that. Uh, who knows if they'll bring it back or whatever, but even if they were to rebuild the Enterprise, it's not that Enterprise. It's not the Enterprise that we've seen, even if they if they, even if they brought it back to exactly what it looked like, which I don't think they'll do, but. Maybe look at the Excelsior working. Yeah, what was that about? Yeah, they just set that up and then they had that one scene, yes. like Scotty sabotaged it and then. Yeah, then they're like, oh, oh well, we're done. So maybe that will come back, I don't know, be the next That bridge set was cool that they used for one scene. Yeah. <laughs> Just the little things, like just uh, Christopher Lloyd just killing that worm creature, just like 
just completely opposite of what people on Starfleet would do. I love that scene. Like, no idea what it was, but just grabbed it and killed it because that's what they do. They're conquerors. Perfect little character thing. They did a great job, too, with Christopher Lloyd making him that brutal character from the beginning, killing, uh, you know, his lover or whoever she was, just because she saw the Genesis stuff. Yeah. And then killing his, you know, henchman because he accidentally blew up the ship. Yeah. And they also seem, like, honorable sometimes, where it's like, after they surrendered, it's like, give me a minute to inform my crew. He's like, I'll give you two for your gallant crew or whatever. It's like, okay. I love little weird stuff like that, where it's like, okay, they're ruthless killers, but they'll also be honorable yeah there's also a uh, more comic relief comedy in this movie than i expected yeah, a, lot of, a lot of funny jokes i mean bones are hilarious as always but the scene of him trying the vulcan neck pinch <laughs> amazing uh kirk had some good quips in this too wow yeah i mean i know i'm just high on the experience of watching it so i'm trying you know not to be like, too great of statements but it's like i truly feel like this is one of my favorite things we've watched ever like i loved it that much like damn it's like i feel like it's one of my favorite movies like i want to rewatch it right now <laughs> like uh I, there's nothing about that that i disliked or had really any complaints about um at all so that's awesome best case scenario i guess when you go to watch something right so yeah uh probably watch it again and deep dive into it for a long discussion see if we still like it as much yeah, maybe I'll watch it again and hate it. I don't know. <laughs> also, last thing I'll say, pacing. It's an hour and 40 minutes. It was just so quick. I mean, we took our little mid-break in about an hour, and I, I was like, holy shit, it was an hour. Like, the only reason I stopped is because we had to switch batteries on the camera. Like, I was, like, thinking we're in the first act of the movie still, like, watching it, you know, and I'm like, oh, the battery's about to die. It must have been a while. And then it was an hour in. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, so it just, and then the second half didn't slow down either. It just went by. It was jam-packed with all the stuff. Yeah, stuff just kept happening, kept it interesting, kept switching it up on us. Plus, we have four different POVs, Klingons, our crew, uh, the Savick and uh, David down there. And their ship. Yeah. The Grisham? Grissom? Grissom, yeah. So that helps keep it, you know. Yeah, bouncing around. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't too much, though. Like, I completely understood what was going on in each thing. Like, I did not get lost. I didn't feel like it was jumbled too much or anything like that. Yeah, it, um, it all laid into each other, too pretty well yeah so wow guys all right what do you guys think I, I i feel like maybe i like this more than people because like like we said at the beginning I, I haven't heard anything about this movie no one's been telling me that this is amazing so i guess thank you for not telling me <laughs> but uh what do you guys think of it because uh i loved it a lot so what about you yeah i i really liked it it's uh, i think tmp is uh my favorite Still right now i don't know but none of them have been bad they've all been good so that's in my opinion so uh what do you guys think about it let us know and uh if this happens to be the first time you've ever watched a video of ours we have reactions to the first two star trek movies and every single episode of star trek the original series and animated series so go check those out subscribe join us on this journey through all of star trek become part of the target audience